when at full strength, the Sacramento Kings are one of the best teams in all of the NBA as they currently sit at fourth place in the Western Conference. And I can't believe I'm saying that. And coming into this season after the offseason that the Kings had, I did say that, the, that we were going to see some improvement from this team coming into this season. But I didn't think it would be this significant. I think it's crazy that these guys are sitting at fourth place in a very loaded Western Conference. So this is really great for that organization and for the fan base. We all know what the, what those guys has been through the last couple of years. So great to see these guys winning some basketball. But back to the task at hand, we said that the Kings are one of the best teams when they're at full strength. And in their most previous game against the Los Angeles Lakers, they were battle tested as they were playing without all-star DeMontis Sabonis. Now, in my personal opinion, the Sacramento Kings have one of the deepest teams in all of the NBA, just for the simple fact that they have multiple ways that they can beat you, and they also have a few guys that can go out and get you 30 or 40 points. But I say this was a battle test game for them, because Sabonis, he brings so much to the table, and he has a true impact for the Sacramento Kings. We look at what he's doing on the glass, it's ridiculous, I would say over about the last month, last two months. He's been grabbing at least 14 rebounds per game, which is crazy. And I think he's become one of those rebounders. When he's out there with his teammates, they don't even have to think about going for the rebound because they know Sabonis is going to come down with it. And offensively is where I've been the most impressed at. <clears throat> excuse me. Where I've been the most impressed at with Sabonis because it seems like not just coming into this year, he's get, gotten better. But as this year has gotten, uh, as this year has gone on, he continues to evolve. I want to look at his playmaking, for example. I remember at the beginning of the season, he would have a game where he gets like four five assists and i thought that was like very impressive and now in the in the recent stages of the of this season now he's getting eight assists 10 assists 12 assists 14 assists so sabonis as this season is going on he's getting better and better and also um the most the action that the sacramento kings run the most the dribble handoff with kevin herter malik monk the kings didn't really um i was watching a game last night they didn't really go to that action last night they were running a lot of off ball screens and a lot of pick and rolls so they were missing that aspect and also Sabonis he can score the basketball he can post up he can knock down the mid-range shot he's great in the pick and roll situation as the role man so um we just listed all those things that the Sacramento Kings were missing and I think they were playing against a dangerous team last night the Los Angeles Lakers um if you watched all the games against them um so far this season they've been very entertaining and they've been very close and I know the Lakers they can be a laughing stock sometimes but that is still a dangerous basketball team because they have LeBron James. So I thought this was a tough battle for the Sacramento Kings. They stepped up and responded well. A bunch of different guys other than De'Aaron De Fox, they stepped up last night and I know Mike Brown was happy to see that. So we look at this game and we knew that Sabonis was gonna be out and that means that other guys in the front court, they were gonna have to step up and help rebound the basketball because we talked about how many rebounds Sabonis was bringing to the table. So that's a lot of rebounding to make up for. And I think every guy that played a minute for the Sacramento Kings front court last night, they did a great job. We look at Rashawn Holmes, who, who was playing so hard last night, and I believe um, part of that was because he wants more minutes. And I believe at one point in time this season, he was completely out of the rotation. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I know he wasn't getting that much minutes, but he played a hell of a game last night. He had a double-double, 16 points and 11 rebounds, and he also hit the free throws to ice the game for the Sacramento Kings. Also, so Trey Lyles, he came off the bench, brought tremendous in, um, energy for the Sacramento Kings. He scored 10 points and he had six rebounds. And the reason I like his six rebounds, because most of them were off the offensive glass. Um, Chemezi Metu, he did a great job. He came in, he blocked two shots. And I also like what I've been seeing from Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray this season, especially, especially recently. It seemed like both of these guys are gaining their confidence at the right time time and they've been playing pretty solid and I don't know what's gone into Harrison Barnes recently but since 
We've come into the new year in the month of January. He's averaging 22 points per game. And in the previous game against the Los Angeles Lakers, he finished with 20 points and six rebounds. And that's a very solid game for him. And since he's been in the NBA, since he's won an NBA championship with the Golden State Warriors, he's always been a three level scorer, can knock down the three point shot. He can hit shots in the mid range. And he's a decent finisher around the rim. So I think it's really good for the Sacramento Kings. It seems like he's starting to get more confident and he's been very aggressive lately and if they can get him to consistently score 12 to 15 points per game efficiently i don't think they need him with all the weapons that they have to score 22 points per game but if he gonna go out there and hoop like that um, i'm pretty sure nobody's complaining but great signs from harrison barnes and i'm really loving what i what i'm seeing from key and murray and i used to love talking about key and murray because i'm a pistons fan and i knew it was going to come down to us getting either Jaden Ivey or Keegan Murray and I would have been very happy with both of those picks and the reason I was so high with Keegan, high on Keegan Murray is that I feel like he can come in and immediately make an impact on winning because he played longer in college than a lot of the other draft prospects so he's very mature and that's what we're seeing that that's what we're seeing from um, him so far this season and I'm not saying he's not going to have any bumps in the road because we've all we, we've already seen him have a few but I think recently his three-point shooting is really starting to pick up and also he's been getting challenged on the defensive side of the ball we look at um, their previous game most of that game LeBron James was being guarded by Keegan Murray and that's a tough task for any player in the NBA so we can only imagine how it feels for a rookie but Keegan Murray um, he didn't shy away from that challenge at all <clears throat> he gave it his all um, he gave it his all, and also he was hitting big shots for the Sacramento Kings on the offense inside of the ball. He's also hitting the glass as he had 10 rebounds. So I think the two forwards, um, Keegan Murray and Harrison Barnes, they step up. They stepped up tremendously last night when the Kings needed them to. The Sacramento Kings also got some help from their backcourt. I like the game that Kevin Herter played last night. He got off to a slow start in the first half, and then he came out in the second half, and he really started hooping. He had he helped the Sacramento Kings get up to a 14-point lead that the Lakers ended up cutting down. And in the fourth quarter, very close game. We know what time it is in the fourth quarter with the Sacramento Kings. De'Aaron Fox, they showed the graphic. He's like top eight, top nine in fourth quarter points this season and I believe he's he has the most clutch time points this season and clutch time is like when it's five minutes left and I believe the game has to be decided by like five points or less but a close game situation I believe nobody has more points than the Aaron Fox so the fourth quarter is his time but um, Fox he also played a very great game he was super aggressive I've never seen him so aggressive early on in the game this season but he finished with 31 points and six assists and three rebounds and I think he was great for the Sacramento Kings and back to the fourth quarter and what the Aaron Fox does um, during that time period I don't think um, I, I know his scoring is, is great but I think we can see him maturing as a basketball player because I think he has some pretty elite decision making during that time too because man it's so much um it's so much pressure that goes into those situations you could be losing um the crowd is ramped up and time is running out and you got to figure out how to win this ball game and, and a lot of the times the defense they can key in solely on you and i think De'Aaron fox when defenses have done that to him he's done a great job of setting up his teammates and he doesn't mind letting his teammates take him to the finish line so um the sacrament Kings, I feel like this was a high quality win for them. I believe they're now sitting at fourth place in the Western Conference, which is crazy, and this and that is so great for this franchise. But um, they're definitely going to be a tough team to beat in the playoffs, and I think uh, with the way things are looking now, they're definitely going to avoid that play-in tournament, and I think they're going to have a top six seed. But that's going to be it for this video. I think the role players of this team and the depth of it is taking them to a whole different level and if you guys enjoyed please leave a like comment down below if you agree or disagree and then subscribe subscribe for more weekly content we do this all the time man and that's curtains <laughs>